trying to get the right angle. That's too high. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hey, so I can see I'm on time, man. We waiting on Big John. Mr. John Bunch, you're running late. Um, actually, I'm trying to get the right angles, ladies and gentlemen, so just work with me. I've been here, but I should have just left it where it was, but I decided to come up with a with a new angle. You know. How that look like? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, man? Yeah, that'll work right there. Yeah! That'll work right there. That's up, that's up. That's up, that's up. One, two. I don't have a microphone. Okay. Hope you guys can hear me. John, where you at, John? <laughs> they gonna kill me. I just wanted y'all to see that it's not big sale. That's all. Just wanted y'all to see that. That is the guy, John Bunch, who was late. So. Trying to get it together. Trying to get it together. Trying to make sure y'all can see and hear me. High risk, what up? T Light, JoJo, Ronald, what up with it? Richard Mayfield, Anita D Ray, Shelton Morris, Felicia Sparkles, Willie Jordan, Jaquez, Dirty D, Deshay, what up with it here? Nate, Xavier. Yeah, we in the studio, man. We're trying to get this thing to where it needs to be, man. So, y'all, like I said, just work with me real quick. I'm trying to get the best camera angle that I can get. And with that comes the nigga you don't know what you're doing thing. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, that'll work for me. When John get here, he's going to have to figure this out. I just hope that stays. John, where are you? All right, I'll tell you what. While we're waiting on John, tonight's topic, what it do, okay? The phone lines, let's try this. Um, is my phone ring? Yeah, just hung up. Okay, while we're waiting on John, somebody give me a call at 404-464-8785, and let's talk about it. I cannot read your comments. I'm going to have to pull up my actual Facebook page to read your comments. Okay. Somebody give me a call, 404-464-8785.
What I got? Charles Dobbins, Stephanie Eason. What up, Bruce? I don't know what he bring. No, I want. I got to get me an FHO background check. Charles Dobbins, Stephanie So I definitely got to get me a uh, FHO background. I got to get me one. Um, get us some tripods or something. Oh, I got them. Damn it, they're in the car. I mean, some high ones because what I'm thinking is, well, once we actually, I got high tripods in the car. Oh, you do? Yeah. But I'm saying, well, if you want to get them tonight, that's fine. But I'm thinking when we start doing the radio sh show, we probably want to get something that we can put over here and just broadcast us from this way, or do you want it to still come from this way? doesn't so. matter. I got two high tripods. In the car? Yeah. I forgot to bring them in here. They high like that? They'll sit the high like this, like I got that right yep. there? Yep. Oh, we need those. I mean, we can get them. We don't have, I mean, for that, we can work with what we got right now. We live right now. Y'all see John just getting in the studio, right? No, nah, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not that's true. The, that's the truth. Y'all see John that's, just walking in the studio. Ladies, not, say, man. No, man. Yeah. How you gonna do that? Hey, man, I had to go 9.30 p.m., man. The people at the fans was waiting. <laughs> hey, man, somebody called me on the phone. Let's talk about John being that's late, That's not. <laughs> see. Okay, that's how we do it. Are we going to start off like that? Hey, man, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Are, are you on the uh, on the Wi-Fi? Yes, yeah, right there. What's it's the... The access to everything right there. Oh. We got all access to all of that. It's a, uh, it's a corporate Wi-Fi. So it's supposed to be. And I have... It's, it's signal strength. Hey, come on, have a seat. Look, you, you grab a seat. You know what I'm saying? We got spaces. You know what I'm saying? We doing shit right here now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can get comfortable. Um, Brotherhood, with Black Dragon and Big Shell. Yeah. What we got, man? Tick, the number is 404-464-8785 or toll-free 844-811-5540. Hit me on the 404-464-8755. Let me type it in, matter of fact. Call in number. Mm-hmm. Eight, seven, eight, five. Yeah. Who we got? Bruce, Anita, Sunshine. What it do? What it do? What it do? Curtis, Daryl. All right, man. Tonight's topic is brotherhood, man. As soon as he gets his situation. Okay, okay. I should have been playing some music while he was waiting. But um, you DJ now, man. We got to get it together, man. We got we here, man. Ain't no more playing no games, man. This shit is <laughs> this, this shit is real. Um, it, it should have clicked in right, man. It worked. Yeah, it's, it's, it's already on. Yeah. Yeah, it's already on. Yeah. So you need to get you. Are you, are you gonna set yours up at? You got to go to the stand right there. Oh, here's my stand. Hey. Man, I've been looking for the stand. You gave it to me. I. Slide over some. Yeah, you gave it to me, remember? Did I give it to you? How else did I get it? I stole it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to, you know. You get right there. You mean to come over? No, I'm, I'm, uh. So then, how, so you can see, you can see yourself. Uh, and can you, I mean, how am I looking? You look good, man. What do you mean? I mean, we're in the big leagues now, y'all. Can we? Can we yell? Can we? Can we? We can do all that. I mean, they. I mean, they're hearing you right now. So we got a radio show. Oh, <laughs> Who, uh, that girl did this. Um, Keisha. Keisha. Oh, yeah, she the one gave us the internal plug, and everything else is on us. All right. As you can see, we already lied. Anybody calling in? I'm trying to do a call in with her. Heavy, what it say? Heavy says, what up, what up, what up, what up? My brother's keeper. We're going to get it together, man. 404-464-8785. That is the number. Now, let's hold on. That's the number. I just called it, Chick. 404-464-8785. Eight seven eight five. 
Holy moly. That is the number. I'm looking right at the phone. When I called it, it rung, so I don't know exactly what's going on. Come over this way, son. I do. Oh, there yeah, there you go. <coughs> All right. We good. What we got? Call in number is 404-464. Tick said that ain't the number. 404-464-8785. If it's saying it's busy... At least John is on time this time. Who said he was on time? You must I was be on late. Time. I hey, sure was. You must I, be late as hell, Nitty. John is not on time. Trust and believe that. Uh, you showed up on time for one time, and now you want to I mean, put out who's not on time. What we got, man? Little man, Cowboy Dell. Daryl Kemp is what? What up with it, man? That is not the number. What is it saying when you call? Let me call this number. Call this number, sis. 404 464 8785. Man, this is exciting. The mailbox number that you are trying to. So maybe it's, it's busy because of, it's looking like. Let me see what it's saying. 39 missed calls, 83 new messages. Line one, let me see. I don't know if I did something and blocked it up, but you okay, try to try don't mess up these people's stuff. No, you know we working with it. We gotta take you know we got class tomorrow at four thirty two. If you can make it tomorrow. Try eight four four eight one one. Keisha, what up? Five five four zero. Eight four four eight one one five five four zero. Five five four zero. Five five four zero. Five five. See, so we hit this. I mean, but it looks like it's already like it's like it's on already. He, I'm looking at the number, right? So I must have did something. I don't locked it up or something, but. That is the number, though. Let me see something. No extension of intercom. It's not hung up. I don't get a dial tone. Testing, like, testing, one, two, three. They're not on. The mic's not on. Testing, one, two, three. I got to get them on. They're not on. Like I said, we got to take the, the thing, but... He gave me the phone line. I just did it. It worked perfect. But anyway. What did you do to the phone line? I don't know. I don't know what I did. Are we on? Uh, we're not on We're not on the radio tonight. No, we're not on the radio tonight. All right, so. Running behind schedule. Y'all work with me. I got to get the uh, guy to teach me how to do the phone. Y'all need a studio manager. You can't be the cameraman, water boy, writer, sound effects guy, telephone man, everything. Oh, well, that's what we're working with right now. <laughs> that, we, they're not going to be ever happy. Hey, we. Well, we got the edifice. We work in there. Like I say, I, I take my classes. We take our classes starting tomorrow. And we will be able to master this stuff. So. All right, here we go. Again, um, we want to apologize for being late. Um, we are here at 930. What you need? I'm good. You good? All right. Um, and I actually did some research tonight. I actually been getting what you do. Oh, you got notes? Yeah, everything. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, we on another level, man. We got to get to another level. We on another level? Yeah. So, all right. Um, again, ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, this will be the last Facebook Live show. So you need to get get used to that. Um, after tonight, the only way you will be able to get us is um, is via. 106 live 106 radio.com which you they have every on every whatever phone you have whether you have an iPhone or an Android or whatever you will be able to uh, tune into the radio station is streaming is streaming 24 7 you once you just show on your Facebook you should be able to see it and you got that Facebook over there so I'm on my regular Facebook pick up the phone and dial the number I just did that Keisha the phone has no ringtone. Down, down nine. Hold on one second. It's not nine. Hold on. It said ended on here. I can see the word looking like it's it's locked up at. So hold on one second. Mm -hmm. 
nothing. End it, end it. I don't know what I did, man, I'm, but apparently I must have did something. That's all I can say. I must have did something because I'm seeing right here where it's showing that the uh, phone. Are there no written instructions? No, we have to, like I said, we got to take the course on how to work all of this, mm -hmm. how to mastermind and stuff. All right, uh, pick up the phone, did that, Keisha, that's not working. That's not working. I'm sorry, everybody. It's not working. Ooh, I like I see y'all facial expressions. <laughs> what up with it, Tawana? Someone help them. We're trying. All right, anyway, this is better now. At least we got adequate lighting. We do have an actual studio thing, so... How much time we got for tonight's show? We got, um, um, I got to get you guys the code to the board. To get you the code to the board. So, you ready, Daddy? or what? What you putting in? Um, Tiffany Primo, where's the guy? There is no guy. We are the guy. <laughs> she said, we're the guy. Yeah, we, we, we have. We, we can barely been, afford to be here by us. Yeah, like, shoot. We haven't gotten to that level yet to what we got. She said, we're the guy. Technical assistance and all we, that. We're fixing to learn how. We're going to be. We, we, Tell we them. There. Yeah, we're getting there. Like I said, we got we got class. We got three classes to complete. All right, so what time is it? Nine o'clock? Ten o'clock, I mean. So we got an hour. Gary, what up with it, my man? Uh, Mush, big Mush. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> hey, you. They that, laughing at us. That's the California school system. Hey, man, look, man. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they having their way tonight. Oh, they having man. Their way tonight. We will get this shit together, man. Trust me. I promise you that. All right, anyway, tonight's topic is brotherhood. I'm your boy, Big Cell, F-H-O-H-N-I-C. King Eminem, King of the South is who I ride with. That's who I put it down for. And my host, my brother, I'm never going to call him a co-host because we are hand in hand, mm -hmm. side by side. I'm Black Dragon, Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. Uh, H and I C. That's what I am. Oh, the H and I C. I thought we yeah. could all use. I mean, you can you can use that if that's what you want to use. I, I mean, mean it's, I mean, you, there ain't nobody higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> my host, I'm never going to say co-host. Um, because we 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 are hosts and we're doing it together. I, I I'm very blessed um, just to see this. This is my second radio show. My last one was Jesus 16 years ago, and uh, everything is different. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's all. I keep telling we. I think we really doing it. That it should. It's, 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 it's cool. Yeah. This is a real studio, man. This ain't no play play studio. No, no, no. This, this, we, we pretty much in the real thing right now. So, uh, we, we're just extremely blessed to be here. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of things have been going on in my personal life. And I just would ask that, uh, those of you who are praying people, please pray for my health. I'm having some, uh, blood pressure issues, which is kind of interesting since I've lost so much weight. It shouldn't be going on but um having a few blood pressure issues and uh i would definitely appreciate your prayers uh with uh to the bottom of my heart um hey heavy say hey have have say he'll work for us he'll help us intern for a 12 pack of cookies and a chocolate milk we getting skinny though <laughs> hey i'm fucking with you for the 12 pack and the chocolate milk buddy I got you, man. You know, he might be talking that getting skinny We're shit, We're getting man. skinny, man. We're going to do it real big up in here, man. Hey, by the way, too, like I said, man, everybody since we announced this yesterday has been reaching out, man. Shout out to my man, Greg Street. Shout out to my sister, Janessa, uh, uh, Janessa Eclectic Creations. Um, shout out to everybody, man. My girl, Tiffany Primo, Biker Life Magazine, major shout out. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Keisha Dixon. Sister number one fan, major shout out to Keisha Dixon. She always says she doesn't want the limelight, but you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Keisha. Is. Yeah. Um, again, shout out to 106 Live, radio.com, my man Izzy. <coughs> major shout out to you guys and the whole staff. Um, and again, Jenna, you guys gotta understand that we just signed the contract yesterday and we're here today just to do the Facebook Live. But we want to show you that this is a real studio. This is how I'll be going down. And again, remind you, you must log in to 106LiveRadio.com or have the, the TuneIn app, which I have all of the different apps that you can have. 
in order to get the station. Um, I have it's on my video. Did you guys see my video I edited today? I was up all night editing that video, just trying to get it together. Man, why I do I look so fat on the video? I mean, man, the camera don't lie, man. It is what it is. No, man. you got me looking all stressed listen, out, man, man. Listen, the camera don't lie. It is it just. The but, camera's lying like listen, the scale lies. Listen, 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 listen. Let, let me tell you something. You don't look all fat let, on the video. Let me tell you something. I'm hiding behind this big ass uh, computer too, though. Man, <laughs> that video you did, man, you had me all stretched out. No, that's because of how you the format of the video. But anyway, man. to be honest, my big homie, don't nobody really give a fuck. We're, oh, and I gotta stop cursing. Oh, we, I, we, we can't curse. We 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 can come. We on Facebook Live. Tonight. Oh, we not on the radio. Yeah. But we can't curse I'm, on the radio. I, I do got to tighten it up. I stopped cursing months ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and God gave me an anticipation, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, he gave you the vision. Well, I mean, <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, it wasn't like you're going to be on the radio. But I just knew in my heart and soul that, that it wasn't right. That I, I felt it. And okay. so I followed God. But you made fun of me. Yeah, yeah. And now you got to stop cursing. I, I mean, I got to tighten up well, the I game. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, I got to tighten up the game, man. <laughs> All right, December 1st will be the first live show. Again, tonight, uh, we're going to touch on the topic of brotherhood. Um, and go at it, and uh, go at it from there. Oh, there it is, right there. You can stream it on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn Radio. It's so much. It's uh, whatever. It's, there's so many ways to tune in on um, for you to get the radio station. Trust me, it's an all HD radio you station. You can get it on Facebook too. Uh, you can get the. I think you can get it through his Facebook page. You can click on live, uh, on the live. You know, like when we live on this Facebook page. And get our show. So, all right, here we go. K. Johnson, what to do? Robert Martin, what to do? Don't disrespect mm -hmm. him. You know he kicked. He kicked a nine foot sign. Man, man, they know I kicked that sign. If him wow. and his sign, man. You know what I'm talking about? You know we don't play that shit. We don't believe that, man. Yes, it does. Put ten pounds on y'all. Laugh a lot. Y'all too crazy. Uh oh. No, that's this one. Oh, is that my phone? Is that the? That's. So apparently it just hung up or something, but he said it's supposed to hang up on it. I don't know when it's hung up because those two lights. No, no, no. See this right here? These two lights are gone. Man, that's high tech. Yeah, well, I got to I gotta learn how to work. I don't know what happened, but whenever those two lights go off, I know that the um, phone has hung up. He said it's supposed to hang up. Man, this stuff costs some money. We're not responsible for this, are yes, we? Yes, we are. We are responsible for everything in here. So like I said, when we in the radio station, it's just us. It's our show. We are responsible for the station. Okay, let's get into this topic. And you just signed me up for this. Tonight's topic like is that. brotherhood. Am I my brother's keeper? A lot of times, I've seen people wear that on their vest. Um, am I, I am my brother's keeper or am I my brother's keeper? Um, and to me, when I first got into the bike set, um, when I actually, when I first got into the bike set, be coming coming from block burner shout out to all of my block burners yeah if y'all didn't know i used to be in the block the block used to i used to be the one screaming the block is hot the block is still hot they're doing their thing man they've grown so much from just the atlanta chapter so shout out to the block burners and they got a big event coming up you need to holler at me man so you can get it advertised on the radio that's all i'm giving you. i'm not giving no dates and nothing yet. anyway that's that we we in business now so you got to do business to do. <laughs> so but i went from block burners to uh to regulators and that's one of the <coughs> the main patches that the regulators wear um so we, we when what me and john want to do what up keith what up ty um what me and john want to do man is there's so much stuff going on on a motorcycle set and everybody is taking the opportunity to say well it's different in this state how many times do you hear that well over here is different Oh, y'all got it good over there in Atlanta. Or, you know, in the, on the West Coast, we don't play that. Well, a lot of people have been hitting me up, and I'm pretty sure hitting John up saying, dude, is there a set standard of rules across the board? I mean, um, and, and yes, there are. There is a set standard of motorcycle rules, protocol, etiquette, the whole nine yards across the board. But what I told John was, I want to take this thing back to, I want to take this thing back to the beginning. I want to take it back to, the reason why, the reason why we so-called or you so-called joined the motorcycle club. See, now it's going, it's like saying it's not hung up. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, I want to take it back to the reason why you joined the motorcycle club in the first place. What was your, 
besides just having a motorcycle, what was it that made you want to join a motorcycle club or what even got your interest in the motorcycle club? Well, I did my survey and most people say, man, I just want to be a part of a brotherhood. I said, okay, brotherhood. So with that being said, there's so many different variations and so many different definitions of brotherhood. What What is brotherhood? And that's what we want to try to tackle tonight. We want to try to bring this thing back to motorcycling one-on-one. Also, listen, man, we got a couple of people request for names. Biker Talk. I liked it. Uh, TMC, which is TMC Radio. But we got Biker Talk Radio. So, um, if anybody else can come up with any names for the show, mm -hmm. please let me know. But we, we just type it in. Uh, wrong phone. It's not the wrong phone. I don't know what's going on. Y'all going to have to work with it. It's, it's still huh? it's, it's still in use. Whatever it is, it's still in use. We done did something. No. So, but anyway, I'm not going to worry about that phone. So, um, I, what I will do is, and I don't know if I can do that. Too. I think I can. But... We want to take it back to the basis of, of, you say you joined because of brotherhood. What is your definition of brotherhood? Okay. And the we're going to get into the am I my brother's keeper um, thing. You want to comment on anything? Or leave the phone alone. We ain't going to worry about the phone. We ain't got that much time now. We ain't at the house. We got to get it together. So, uh, real quick. Sorry, I messed up your hat. Um, piggyback on anything I said so far. So, when you come to the uh, basis of what the MC is about, and the and the basis of what brings us all together we we love motorcycles we we have this bug that bit us some of us when we were four or five other of us, others of us when we were 45 or 55 this bug bit you that made you feel this incredible way whenever you rode a motorcycle and then you met some folks that had the same insatiable passion that you had to ride free and enjoy the lifestyle that comes to biking. The but do you think that's enough, though? But, but, but hold on. Okay. So the lifestyle of riding together, living together, loving together, living out on the on the on the open range, sleeping in in the rain. Uh, those that really have gotten out there through their time. And others ride around in town, they race together, they go from bar to bar, they have the nicest motorcycles, everything is really great. But there's this, this, this fun camaraderie. And then two folks come together and say, let's build a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. But I think it's before that though, John. This, this is what I'm saying. What, what I'm trying to... The, but, what, but, but, but hold on, hold okay. on. Okay. So they say, let's build a brotherhood. And they give that brotherhood a name, the such and such motorcycle club. And then they start inviting all these other brothers to come to this brotherhood. And so this is the the basic crux of why we all say we come together. But this is what I'm saying. For me, what I what I'm trying to get into is this, is that before you even get to that point, before you even get to the point of actually meeting somebody else that's riding a motorcycle okay for whatever reason you bought your motorcycle and you said okay well hey uh, if now if if it was because your homeboy had a motorcycle and you saw the fun that he had the brotherhood bond actually was actually there before the motorcycle okay well the friendship bond and then you take it from friendship to brotherhood i don't even think people realize that you have friendship and then you have brotherhood Brush, brotherhood Sets the top of friendship. Everybody always say friendship is the highest, the highest form of respect that I can pay you. But a brotherhood is higher than friendship. So my question is, my 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 the meat of what I'm trying to get to is this: is that what was it about brotherhood in your life that you were lacking that you thought you could find in the motorcycle community or in the motorcycle club itself? You, you understand what I'm trying to go? Right. Like. Um, one of the biggest things, man, my dad always tell me is, is just when he see me going through shit, I'm sorry, <laughs> when he see me going through stuff, uh, in the motorcycle, you know, just dealing with the, with just the club business, just me, personalities, whatever. One of the biggest things he always asks me is, son, 
Is all of this necessary for you to ride your motorcycle? This emotional roller coaster that you go through, the, the disappointments, the let's downs, you know, the happy times, the good times, the bad times, is all of this necessary for you just to ride your motorcycle? What is it that you don't have at home amongst us as a family, amongst your real brothers and sisters, that you this motorcycle club um, gives you that, or you seek that in the motorcycle club? Um, and that's what I'm trying to touch on tonight. So, brotherhood. Like John said, once you get your motorcycle, you run into somebody else. Hey, you love to ride. I love to ride. You know, let's let's start riding together. And you go from that to like, hey, let's find three, four, five more people that want to ride. And then you guys do that. So at that point, was it the brotherhood that you were seeking? Or was it the mm -hmm. fact that you just wanted to ride with other people who, who, who just to ride with? And I think that's what, I think that's what, gets everybody caught up in the in the MC in the MC world within your club is because some of us join actually seeking the love, the loyalty and the, and the responsibility and the needing of a brother. When some of us joined it it was just some cool shit, they ride I ride and you know, that's what I want to be a part of. So that's what I want to get to tonight, man. I want to get to the emotional part of um, I, I want to get to the emotional part of really understanding what the brotherhood is. Is your club foundation based on brotherhood or is your club foundation based on just some cats who got together who wanted to ride and thought it was cool to start a club? I know that's going to be kind of touchy. I know a lot of y'all, oh man, my club was founded on, hey man, a lot of y'all clubs, believe it or not, was founded on just some cats who wanted to ride, man. They, they thought it would be cool uh, to get some vests and, and just start a club. So, brotherhood, the foundation of brotherhood. Um, like I said, I did some research on this. And the definition of brotherhood is all of those engaged in a particular trade or profession or sharing a common interest or quality. Okay. When you, when you think about what brotherhood is when you think about the definition of brotherhood or we, when you think about what you've been told about brotherhood i want you to i want you to understand this i can be your friend without being your brother okay what's the difference between what's the difference between my real brother my birth brother and the difference between my club brother okay what's the difference Everybody, uh, everybody, okay, what, uh, somebody said they agree with that. I think people use the word brotherhood too loosely. For me, there's a big difference between brothers and club brothers. Okay, okay, there it is there. But everybody, hey, what you looking for? Uh, my bad. Oh, everybody, everybody has this, this preconceived notion that once I join a club, I join a brotherhood. And the other plug is back there, Jay. You got to come off of that one. It should be right there under that desk somewhere. Yeah. That once I join a club, I automatically get a brotherhood. And I'm telling you, you went for a rude awakening, homie. If that's what you believe, if that's what you think, um, if that's what you think happens, you're definitely in for a rude awakening. Um, and um, now, can you be taught brotherhood? I don't even think you can be taught yes, brotherhood. Yes, you can, yes, yes. You think yes. you can be taught brotherhood? Yeah. I, I think brotherhood has to come from within, man. I think no, brotherhood. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, John says John says no, so we're gonna get into his no. As soon as he gets all this tech, if, you know, as soon as he gets his uh, 905 arrival technical difficulties worked out. <laughs> but anyway, me personally, I think that brotherhood. You you have to learn how to. I think you had to come into this thing already understanding, already being a part of what a brotherhood is in order to have a real the brotherhood that's needed in a motorcycle club in order to in order to survive. Um, everybody's saying yes, you can, yes, you can. My club is actually a brotherhood, being we all share a trade in the same union. Okay, so does everybody agree that there is a difference between friendship or being friends and a being a brother? Does everybody agree that there's a difference? Um, 
Amen to that. It's a difference, okay? That should be taught to them. I don't think you can teach it out of the prospects. Passion to ride, but serving the community should be the first. First, first, okay? You share a different bond. Okay. Again, I don't think, me personally, I think, I think everybody, friendship is here and brotherhood is here. So brotherhood is higher than friendship. When you call somebody your brother, that that part of it becomes um there's certain things that i would do for my brother that i won't do for my friend and i got a you know got a lot of friends but those that are my brothers they get the extra mm -hmm. they get the extra extra you know consideration shall i say um are they gonna stay right there john over here messing up it's a difference right agreed Breed up real brotherhood. Ty and I can see that. I mean, breed has, breed has showed some some different levels of brotherhood. Um, and and again, like that's club business, so it is what it is. But um, you know, you, you mentioned it, so I, I just spoke on that. Um, so y'all say you can be taught brotherhood. Now, one thing I want to one thing I want to say is this: is that understand the deepness of the word brotherhood understand when you say brotherhood we have a brotherhood that means that when you say you have a brotherhood that means that when it's raining outside you know you don't care about getting wet if your brother's outside in the rain you outside in the rain when it's hot outside if your brother's outside in the sun you're outside in the sun um as, so, as opposed so, to a friend. So yeah. let's let's talk about brotherhood for a minute. Okay. Can brotherhood be taught? Of course brotherhood is taught. So um where people fall short in the brotherhood is that the brotherhood's not being taught. But yes, brotherhood is taught. Brotherhood's taught when you go in the military and they teach you uh to leave no man behind. Uh you don't know not to leave no man behind until you're taught that in the military. Okay. Uh, brotherhood is taught when you go online and you're in a fraternity and they stick you with line brothers and y'all all go through hell together so that you learn what it's like to support the brother next to you and to depend on and to depend on and to trust and to 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 cherish that brother in that way brotherhood is taught those people that don't necessarily have brothers when they when they get started or don't know what brothers are um, they are taught brotherhood through these organizations, these fraternal organizations, military organizations, band, uh, uh, football teams. They're all taught that all of these folks are working together towards one goal, which is the brotherhood. And there are certain oh, things that God. bind a brotherhood and make a brotherhood a brotherhood. First of all, bylaws. If we all follow these bylaws and do these things this way, then the brotherhood mm -hmm. guarantees us this status. If we vote for this, the brotherhood guarantees us that result. If we act this way, the brotherhood guarantees us this result. So brotherhood, sisterhood, family, these things are taught. You know, your mama teaches you brotherhood when you get in a fight with your brother or you, or you hit your sister and your mom breaks your back in two with that switch saying mm -hmm. I don't give a damn what happens you will never forsake your sister you will never forsake your brother you will always stand together no matter what so these things like everything else it like hate like everything these things are taught and so the motorcycle club succeeds when the motorcycle club has a good um, policy and a good training program and good methodologies for teaching brotherhood, rewarding brotherhood, and punishing people who cannot display or show brotherhood. or be about brotherhood. Okay. So, John just just pointed out that as far as you can't obtain brotherhood after you join a motorcycle club. I think one of the things too for me, man, is that being raised um, in a family that the way we love and the way we were, you know, taught to love each other, I think a lot of times it's almost a major disappointment for me 
when the brotherhood is not automatically given or automatically displayed and you're asking yourself, well, you don't understand how this thing works? Yeah, you're not going to like me today. You didn't like what I did or you don't like how I got down, but so what? You're my brother. Get over it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of people tend to hold on to the the grudge part of what a person did. When you're in a brotherhood, man, that shit, it, I'm sorry. I'm, when you're in a brotherhood, it's nothing. Your brother can do something that was stupid. He can do something that was out of whack. He can do something that was out of place. And yeah, you're going to be mad at him. And yeah, you're going to chastise him. But that's it. You 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 get mad you and you move on. And, and that's just that. Um, I think brotherhood, the number one factor for brotherhood is loyalty. Yes or no? Yes. Loyalty. In order to have a brotherhood, you have to be loyal. And when I say loyal, that means totally, totally loyal. Um... And I think that's what's missing too. What I'm saying is this, man, is that a lot of you cats that have joined your motorcycle clubs, and I'm only speaking from, from what I've seen and what I know, a lot of you cats that have joined motorcycle clubs, I don't even think you ever thought about it this deep. I don't even think you ever took the time to really understood what this is that you're being a part of. You were just so excited to ride and you might have even took the punishment and the scrutiny of being a, a prospect. You might have did whatever it was they told you to do to be a prospect, mentally not even being prepared that, hey, man, I really need to be 100% all in for this. We're not going to even get into the part to where I say, hey, will you die for a brother? Will you die, will you die for Big Cell just because he's a king? Or will you die for John just because he's a black Sabbath? You, you feel what I'm saying? Um, that part of it. But that all of that is a part of the DNA and the makeup of brotherhood. Till uh, till death do you, it's like a marriage. Till death do you part. So it's just like I'm gonna say it's like this. It's just like a female when you meet her, you guys meet for the first time. Oh, the courtship is beautiful. She's doing everything. The house is clean. She cooking all your little favorite meals, and y'all doing good. Six months later, it's just still peachy king. You know, she haven't farted in front of you yet. Ain't no farting in front of you. You feel what I'm saying? Her hair and makeup is done. You know, you you putting on your good clothes and making sure everything right. But So after a year, okay, let's get married. You move in together. Now you get, you get to see a few things when you move in. You know, and now I'm all, she's off to work now, so she ain't got time to clean up the house before you come over. But then you mess around and get married. And then it all breaks loose. It all It all comes together. You mean it's not a honeymoon all the time? Oh, no, man. Trust and believe it ain't no honeymoon, man. If she mad at you, you mad at her. You didn't tell me you take 45 minutes in the bathroom. You, you feel what I'm saying? Uh, you, you know, all that time. It, it, hell, all hell breaks loose, man. Um, but uh, April Jones said if they don't respect or can't be loyal to themselves, they won't respect or be loyal to the brotherhood. All about them. Well... Loyalhood, loyalty and brotherhood has no selfish desire. That's totally a team sport. Brotherhood and loyalty is totally a team sport. You can't even have a selfish bone in your body in order to be a part of a brotherhood. You actually give up you to become them or to be a part of them. And that's what I talk about. It. That's how I got started doing this whole thing um, was looking at the things that I saw that are different in the motorcycle club world than when I came in. And a lot of the brotherhood stems from doing the things together that the brotherhood likes to do, which in this case is ride motorcycles. So if you have a brotherhood of cowboys and everybody's supposed to be riding the range and, and, and roping uh, uh, cattle and doing branding, when you start spending all your time in the saloon, and none of your time out roping and riding and branding, you start to fight over small things, you start to argue, you start to fall apart because the brotherhood is not doing what the brotherhood set out to do. So when your time is filled with the non-MC things, like uh, we got to go to every nightclub, uh, every MC clubhouse on every bike night and Oh boy, we're riding out to the bike night. We got the nicest bikes. So we, the strippers on the pole. All of this hyperbola. But you haven't ridden with your brothers anywhere. And a lot of times when motorcycle clubs call me and say, 
we've got a real internal problem. The motorcycle club is falling apart. We were wondering uh, what we could do, and maybe you could help us, Black Dragon. Yeah, the first thing, one of the first questions I ask, and uh, it's always catches them by by uh, by uh, um, by surprise when I say, "When was the last time your motorcycle club rode somewhere together? Your chapter? When was the last time you rode somewhere that wasn't a clubhouse or wasn't on the bike set for you to party? When was the last time you did that one thing you guys love to do? When was the last time you hit a canyon? When was the last time?" You rode to uh, down uh, uh, across the desert to uh, uh, such and such springs. When was the last time you rode up through Helen through the mountain passes? And when was the last time your brotherhood did those things that surround that brotherhood? That that's what the brotherhood says it does. So it's hard to 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 enjoy and learn each person in the brotherhood when. You're in a nightclub and you gotta get next to the person to hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that booty over there. Oh, look at that dress. That these things are accoutrements. Those are the things that you do when the brotherhood is sound. When the brotherhood is not sound, so how can I how can my brother how can I trust my brother that I don't know? How can I know my brother has an issue, he's about to commit suicide, when I never ask him what's going on in his life? How can, how can I know if my, if my brother's girl just left him, his wife just left him, she took the children? If all I care about when I pick up the phone is I want to ask him, when is he going out to the next party with me? What you doing next week? My mom just died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Hey, tell you what, get back with us and let us know if you're going to ride with us. <laughs> so it, it's not just selfishness, although that's the big thing. It's a lot of ignorance. It's a lot of uh, ignorance to the fact that the motorcycle club is not training the people in what it takes to be brothers. We're so busy building numbers. We got to go win that trophy. All we want to do is get you signed up and get you 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 a quick 90-day fake prospect ship in where we're going to ask you to do some dumb stuff like push-ups. Wait, 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 wait. you telling me 90 days you can't prospect in 90 days? Well, I, what I'm saying is... <laughs> 90 days should be the minimum time. Yeah. And if you are a super hot prospect <coughs> and a super <coughs> and a super hot runner, then yeah, you can go across in 90 days. But if you're not so super hot, then you might need 120 days or in my case, you might need 5 years. Let so, me ask you this real quick. I spoke uh Bruce uh, Bruce Tick, our man Bruce Tick Perry. Tick. Tick said he Listen. ain't dying for no for his motorcycle. He ain't dying for it. Said so you lost me with that dying for a brother shit. Uh, what I mean by we not going to even get into that part of it is this. Do you do understand that if the same brother that wears the same patch that you wear goes out and does some dumb shit and I got a quick curse it, goes out and does something dumb or, go and, or makes a decision that that causes drama then when the person come back to retaliate they don't retaliate on anybody with that patch on they don't care they didn't come to get john or they said they didn't come to get i go out there and do something dumb they don't come to get sale they come to get whoever got the, the vest on so yeah when i say dying for your brother that's what i'm saying you have to be able to know that the person that has on this same patch that you have on has your best interest at hand no matter what i.e. if they even even as simple as riding their motorcycle for example um we all know this in Atlanta to be true clubs have been labeled <coughs> clubs have been labeled and targeted by the police based on one member a member that was out there speeding you know 200 miles 180 miles an hour got away from the police but already all they remember is that patch so now, every time the police see that patch, they don't give a damn if it was you or not. Pull your ass over. You feel what I'm saying? Because that whole club has been labeled because of that one incident that your, your club brother thought was cool as shit for him to run from the police. Oh, by the way, uh, the Veterans Administration suicide hotline is 800-273-8255. <laughs> 
800-273-8255. A simple copy and paste might save someone's life. The Veterans Administration suicide hotline. Oh, you know what? Real quick, man. Real quick. We got to do this. and we could, Because you were late, we didn't get a chance to do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm still throwing that up. Hey, man, we lost a real good person yesterday, Princess. Um, yeah, she died yesterday. You didn't hear that? No. Well, you know who Princess is, right? I think so. From uh, Be With Blazing and Be With Chocolate. She died yesterday. Yeah. So, real quick, man, we're going to do a moment of silence. We're going to recognize Princess and just do a real quick moment of silence, man. She was a, on the, on the bike set here in Atlanta, man, everybody loved her, everybody knew her. Um, and uh, how she died was it was crazy, so not to get into detail of that, but let's just do a real quick 15-second moment of silence, man. Put them throttle hands up wherever you are at your house for whoever has passed away. But I just wanted to bring that up. It, it just actually hit me when I was talking about dying for a brother, so... Real quick, 15 seconds. Let's go. R.I.P. Princess. All right? R.I.P. Princess. Whew, that was a rough one, man. That kind of hit me real, real, you know. She was good people, man. All right, so... Tiffany, um, Tiffany Primo was at Crog Street Bridge? Man, yeah, she's doing her thing, man. I know where Crog Street Bridge is. <laughs> so what I'm saying is this, man. You can be put in a situation to where your brother can cause you to die. And, I, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it has happened on the bike set. We we don't talk about it as, as much as we probably should to prevent it, but it it has happened. So brotherhood, let me go, let me go into this real quick. Okay. I did some research on the term, am I my brother's keeper, okay? And, of course, it took me back to the definition in the Bible. That's where, that's where the term, am I my brother's keeper, come from. Now, whether you believe in the Bible or not, this is just a parable or a story in the Bible. Um, so I went to the Bible. It's actually in um, Genesis chapter, I mean, yeah, Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 through 11. And brother's keeper, am I, am I, my definition, a saying, from the Bible story of Cain and Abel, after Cain had murdered his brother Abel, God asked him where where was his brother. Now, doing my research into that, I realized that when Cain said, am I my brother's keeper, it wasn't to take responsibility, but it was to ask God, man, hey, I'm not responsible for him. What, the, what, what you asking me for? What the hell you asking me for? <laughs> where he at? Man, hey, I don't know. That's on him. So I, I think we've taken it. We've taken the term. What was God's answer when He said, "Am I my brother's uh, keeper?" I mean, we can get into that. I mean, like I said, I just did that part of it, but it's, it's all in there, four, six, and eleven. Um, and I think God told him, you know, you are responsible, or you know, you did something. I smell blood. I don't have my Bible verse all the way down, but I remember studying it. something about I smell. It basically, God said, "Hey, man, I think some. You know, he already. I think something went down." But what I'm saying is this. When you ask the question, am I my brother's keeper, okay, what really, what really does that mean? What, what does that mean to you as a Black Sabbath, am I my brother's keeper? Well, in the Black Sabbath, we don't ask that question. The answer is, I am my brother's keeper. And there are um, expectations of loyalty, expectations of respect, expectations and rules. And those rules set out by the Bible. You know, man is not inherently good. Man is inherently bad. We have to learn to be good. <coughs> we have to learn. There are some people that are just really not selfish. Like my little sister Lori. She, she'd always share her food and all that sort of thing. But there are other folks that are, are very selfish. And they have to be taught. And that's why we go to church. The church teaches us how to be better people. The motorcycle club teaches us how to be better. If we'll listen to what the motorcycle club teaches us, and the best way to listen is that thing that nobody knows, just like you had a hard time quoting that Bible, ask folks to quote their bylaws, two or three, two or three paragraphs of their bylaws. And you'll find that most people treat the bylaws like they do the Bible. Okay, so maybe, now people quote out the bylaws stuff that's not even in them. Maybe, and that may be something too that we need to get into. That, uh, let me write that down. Bylaws. 
I'll shoot your brother. Man, put the phone down. We don't have a phone, John. I'm just leave it alone, John. We don't have a I'm phone. I'm just restarting John. the phone, John. We, you messing up stuff, John. That ain't what the man told us to do. <laughs> we run our prospects for 265 days. Then they are tested about the diamond we wear and some history of what we are. Silent assassin, my man Darwin. Okay, well, and again. Whatever it is that you have to do to pull out that brotherhood in all members. but And this, this, like I said, for me, the question is this. I already understand that John is not perfect. He understands that I'm not perfect. But because the love that I have for him and the brotherhood and the bond that we have. I'm, I'm perfect. Hey, man. In your world, kudos. But what I'm telling you. I already understand that, but the bond and the brotherhood that we have, it's nothing that we can't work past. It's nothing that it's nothing that can come between us because we've already made that bond and we've already established the brotherhood that hey, this is what it is. So for the fans that that don't like me on the show that love John, kudos to you. For the fans that don't care about John but love me, kudos to you. It is what it is, but that's not going to stop what we have that what we have decided to be a part of and the mission that we decided to be a part of. So, again, what, I, what I'm getting back to is this, man. Before you join this motorcycle club, because like I said, this is for people that are listening that call themselves independent riders, um, people that are listening that call, you know, that say, hey, man, I don't need I don't need a bunch of cats to ride with, man, to ride my motorcycle. That's true, but you always end up finding a bunch of cats to ride with. You don't need them. But you always end up finding them to be around them and to ride with them. But neither here nor there. But what I'm saying is this. Tonight I want you to take this time for everybody to reevaluate what was it that you were looking for when you joined your motorcycle club? Were you looking for the brotherhood? Were you looking for the camaraderie? Is there something missing at home? Maybe you don't have any sisters. I mean, maybe you don't have any big brothers. You know, maybe you just moved to a new town and, and that that manly bond or that sisterly bond is what it is that you need in order to just to keep you functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. Whatever it is, understand this, man, that there are some of the brothers in the motorcycle club. Um, there are some of the brothers in the motorcycle club who need just that. And they expect that from you. And that when you don't give that to them, you disappoint them and you cause them to to be angry or upset with you because they're looking for hey um you are my brother so uh, i just wanted to put that out there man with this brotherhood thing because i'm telling you guys if we're gonna get this thing back on the right track if we're gonna get this thing um to where it needs to be when i say this thing the set the motorcycle community us blacks whites whatever us together the MC community. If we're going to get this thing back to where it used to be, because everybody was talking about, oh, man, back in the day, it was so much fun. We didn't ride as much. You guys, you know, a lot of old heads tell me, hey, said I appreciate you for putting the set out there, you know, for, you know, you know, putting the set out there. But, boy, the stuff that, you know, the stuff that these young cats are doing nowadays is just crazy. There's no loyalty. There's no brotherhood. So if we're going to get back to that, I think we need to get back to the basic foundation of understanding what brotherhood is, understanding the reason for you joining a motorcycle club. You feel what I'm saying? You have to understand that. To to how can you how can you let me see. How can I ride next to John with the same patch on that he has and I don't have a clue about what it is or who it is that John is. And if you're in a large club, I know it's hard to learn everybody. But Brotherhood has almost like, well, I'm going to say this. <laughs> Brotherhood has a sign, almost like the Masons. Those that know it, they know it. When they see it, they know it. And those that don't know it, they don't see the sign, they walk right past it. So my thing is, um, as a policy wonk, uh, my thing is, so... What does the MC require of brothers? So you can think all day long about why I came to the Brotherhood and, and reevaluate and say, well, what brought me to the Brotherhood? And I think that's good. But I don't like to just throw 
something out there and not give you a way to fix it. So there are some things you can do to fix your brotherhood and your MC and to fix your brotherhood about yourself. You know, when you look in self-inflection, sometimes you can't see the answer. The answer to your brotherhood will always come from your bylaws. So, the bylaws were set up, if you have bylaws, if you don't, you need to get some, but the bylaws were set up by motorcycle clubs to ensure the sanctity of the brotherhood is followed. So, um, you don't have to like your brother to be a brother to your brother. I don't like everybody in my motorcycle club. There are some folks I don't like at all. I can remember when um, mm -hmm. one of my uh, regional presidents who didn't like me went to a, uh, a big event that I was in and he didn't like me and I was mad as hell at him. So during this event, it was just him and I and I never saw him. Uh, I knew he was there and he came up and said hi, but I never saw him. And we were, I mean, we were mad at each other. And he had done some stuff and, and uh, some stuff in the club. I, I was so mad at him that I killed him. And I was like, I can't stand that guy. So later on at the event, I said to him, man, I didn't even see you nowhere in this whole time you was here. You didn't, you didn't get to hear me speak. I didn't see you. You weren't here. And the brother said to me, Black Dragon, I had your back every step of the way of every place you went. And he named every spot I was in, and he was no more than 10 steps away. Had anything happened to me or anything like that, he'd mm -hmm. have been there in an instant. My brother that was angry at me and didn't like me and had been berating me through all the, the meetings and blah, 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 but when we was out there, we were together. And I didn't even know he had my back. That's brotherhood. So you don't have to like a brother to be a brother. When you, you don't get along in the house, I, I, I got two brothers in my club that fight like cats and dogs. You, you wouldn't even think they're brothers. They do such ugly things to each other. But when something comes between these two cats, you know their blood because they come together so fast, um, it, it'll blow your mind. So the brotherhood will stand the test of adversity if you treat it with utmost respect. I'm going to protect you even if you don't like me, even if we just had a fight, even if we can't even stand and look at each other, I'm just going to be right over here. You're never even going to see me, but boy, let somebody try it. Um, you, you don't have to respect a brother to um, treat him as a brother. Man, there are some cats in my club that have done some stuff to me. Or some stuff to the club. And you don't like those such and suches. But they still got the patch on. In the United States Navy, we used to have to salute officers. And there were some officers that I just really didn't respect. They didn't know what the hell they was talking about. And the Navy had a, a saying, you salute, you salute the officer not the man you salute the you salute the rank not the man because in the military we don't have time for you to not like people and you're not gonna, you're gonna do what we say do because I got this on and you don't so you're gonna do that or we got something for you well I don't like him you don't have to like him he's wearing that rank you're gonna salute him I don't like my brother you don't have to like him he's got that patch on and what we say is that the brotherhood requires that you treat him like a brother as long as he's wearing that patch. So what, what is treat him like a brother? We'll yeah. talk about that in a minute. But you must show your brother's deference and respect at all times. Respect is, respect is a refusal to do something inappropriate, untoward, dirty, backhanded, or, or any of that sort of thing. So you got a brother who's got a fine little daughter. She's about 25. She's really mature for her age. You looking at her, she's looking at you, and he walks in the next room and you're getting her phone number because she's giving it to you. Mm. BS. Hey, I wouldn't expect Big Cell. Big Cell has me over his house. I'm, I'm, I'm at his house. His mama and them are there. 
His daughter's there. Uh, am I gonna shoot at his daughter? Well, hey man, you know she she asked for my phone she came number first. Me first. Yeah, she came to me first. <laughs> There's an expectation of my brother that I conduct my. Uh, you know what? Because you don't just let anybody in your house, but you let your brothers in your house. So brothers don't do dirty, low down things to one another. It it is a requirement that a brother keep himself. When a, you know, it's interesting. A brother once told me, "I got to go away for a while. I got to take a trip." I need you to treat my family like it's your own while I'm gone. He didn't mean screw his woman. Mm. Okay. What he meant was, I'm fixing to go take a trip. I got to go hang with these folks for a while. I'm going to be, I'm going to be. Oh, in, in, away. Uh, right. And so while I'm away, I'm going to need you to handle things. When cars broken down, blah, blah, blah. Because where I am, I ain't going to be able to handle that no more. Mm -hmm. So... He wouldn't tell anybody to do that. That was not a brother. I cannot believe that. <clears throat> Did it freeze it? No, no I think it, 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 it left it on. So, the brotherhood also, uh, when you think about a brotherhood, you have to think about this really funny little thing. Do unto others. Well, it comes different when it's your brother. I think what I'm gonna do is tell everybody not to uh, ever call me at this time. Well, yeah, from now on Thursdays. From now on Thursdays, just don't call me. Thursdays nine thirty to eleven. Thursdays nine thirty to eleven. Do not call me. So um, you have to um, you have to um, do unto others and. When we talk about doing to others, we talk about doing to brothers. You got to do unto brothers as you would expect your brothers to do unto you. I, it, I don't think, but see, that's what I'm telling you. I think the expectations. No, no, you, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. Let me, let me finish. Okay. Because I want to give you these things to ascribe to. See, you ascribe to things to be bigger and better than you are. Like, I wanted to stop cursing. And it's been really tough. Every now and then, y'all will catch me right. But... I'm I'm ascribing to be better, mm -hmm. and at not cursing, delivering better, speaking better, stop saying um. I'm ascribing to you know I had a girlfriend, I broke her heart, I killed her heart. So I'm ascribing to be a person that doesn't kill hearts anymore. Um, I'm ascribing to be a better father. I'm ascribing to be a, a better person who prays, and I'm ascribing to be a better brother. I want to be a better president than I was. So I continue to do things. I write things down to try to make myself better. What if you have a president that's jealous of you? Man, jealousy is what is, is that? Do not call me at this time. It's good. It's good. Uh, the question was... What, what if I have a president that's jealous? So jealousy is an amazing thing. It's the thing that, that started that in my, my brother's keeper. Because you had a, a brother that was jealous, jealous of a brother. Jealous of another brother, yes. Jealousy... You know, I talked to a, I talked to a friend of mine mm -hmm. today. Uh... His father raised us both. He went on to become a doctor. For 30 years, I've, I've been jealous of him. Because he got to be a doctor. He works hard at it. They didn't give it to him. And even in my own heart, I knew I was jealous. I, have, I, I, was, je I, I was jealous of him. Because I felt like he had all the breaks. And he had the father. I didn't have the father. This jealousy thing is terrible. If you have jealousy in your heart and you feel it, that's okay. You can be jealous. But to act on jealousy is terrible. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you smile at somebody and, and, and you wish them well and you're just so jealous, but you still wish them well anyway. You make yourself better because you do better things. And so talking to my friend, you know, one of the things I was like, you know, man, I was always so jealous of you. You thought, I thought you had it so great. My friend was telling me, dude, I was jealous of you. <laughs> so sometimes people you jealous of, they're envying you and you don't even know it. Um, 
so if you have someone that's jealous of you, well, how do you know they're jealous of you? And 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 sometimes you go out of your way to to make things better for jealous people. But let me add this: you don't kiss anybody's behind. If you know somebody's jealous of you and treating you wrong, you don't treat them extra specially nice, thinking that they're not going to be jealous anymore, because they are going to be jealous. They're going to be even more jealous, and they will turn on you, even though you've given them all this stuff. So you, you reward people with good behavior, and you punish people with bad behavior. My mom used to say, if you treat me good, you're going to have the greatest person you've ever seen in your life. If you treat me bad, you're going to be sorry you crossed this brother. Mm. Um, uh, two more points. Brotherhood means that you have to stop thinking about my, 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 mine, 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 I, I, I. This is why I wear my Wii shirt. Brotherhood means that you got to be the bee in the beehive. You always see the bee or the ant working for the hive. What's best for the hive? What's best for the MC? We are the MC. We make the MC, not I. There's no I in MC. There's no I anywhere in motorcycle club. So if you stop thinking about I and start thinking about we. So how do you do that? When you want to make a decision, you want to do something, you ask yourself, is this best for the club or is this just for me? You start acting like that. You start thinking like that. You automatically start becoming a better brother tomorrow just because you ask different questions today. So we want to go on the ride to Tuskegee. No, we want to go to Alabama. Do you want to go to Alabama, or is it better for us all that we go to Tuskegee? Well, they're both in Alabama, aren't they? So anyway, what I'm saying is we got to think about others. And when you start thinking about others, when you start including others in your decision, and these others that we're talking about are your brothers, when you start taking your brothers and treating them well, you get better, they get better, the motorcycle club gets better. And this is why I always say one person can make a difference. You can turn a whole motorcycle club around tomorrow just by being a better brother. Just by being the one that is going to make sure, hey, look, kickstand's up at 930. I'm not playing. We're going to try to get out of here at 930. Calling people, getting people together. But there's other things. A brother understands when his brother is in, in trouble. A brother understands when his brother's you, how do you understand? You understand by asking, not always by calling and starting off the phone call with, oh, man, my life is messed up, this is messed up, blah, blah, me, 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 me. Start asking about, hey, man, how are you? How are things in your life? What's going on? What can I do to help you? What can I do to assist you? Sometimes you might not even mean it, but if you start saying it and start trying to act upon it, you'll start doing it. And how you feel in your heart and in your soul when these people that you have sworn that you're going to love, how you feel when you start treating them with love and respect and compassion, it is a different feeling. It's an amazing feeling when people care about you for real because you cared about them. Finally, you don't leave a brother stranded. You don't leave a brother stranded emotionally. You don't leave a brother stranded financially. You don't leave a brother stranded physically. When when Big Cell says I'm going I'll die for you. He he really means I'll die with you. We're not trying to go out here and start nothing. We're 99%. We're not regulating. We're not taking no territory. None of these things. But I tell you if the wrong people pull up and want to start some <laughs> big sales always i'm not the toughest cookie in the world all you got to do is fade me all you got to do is swing and you got to fade all you got to do is swing and you got to fade hey, all, all, i'm all, not yeah. sure what swing and you got to fade means hey basically what i'm telling you is this i tell everybody like this all the time i've never lost a fight that i didn't start never. yeah because when you don't start a fight you know me catching by surprise hey. uh, uh, uh. but but basically what it is is this man is that I accept the responsibility of what this thing is about, the brotherhood. I accept the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a great amount of understanding. So, for example, um, if right now you was to walk in here and say, hey, man, we finna kick John ass, you got to kick my ass, too, because John is with me at this time. At this time. With, and whether I whether I agree with what he did or, did or don't agree, I don't even know what it is. But it's the loyalty, it's the bond, it's the brotherhood that you have to have. So that's what I mean by when you put these patches on, 
and you're investing up all these individuals, you have to make sure that these individuals have the same love, passion, charisma, character that you have. That you have. Because understand this. It's a cold situation to get into and you look around and them same cats that were just with you, you was in the club, they was hoo ha and y'all probably done, you know, did a couple of females together and then drank together and did whatever you done did. But now when it's time to get down to the business, they like, well, hey, man, I mean, I got a family. You know, that ain't what I signed up for. Uh, and we all know what I'm talking about. Everybody know what I'm talking about. You didn't, be, man, please. If you didn't sign up to fight, but you signed up to have fun, then you signed up for the wrong shit. I, know, I got a quick curse. You signed up for, <coughs> for the wrong reason. It the all thing goes is, hand in hand. Love these people always will say, you know, um, these people say, well, I'm in a motorcycle club. I'm not in a gang. Well, you're running in a tough group of people. So you might, you, you can think you in whatever you want to think you in. At any time, this thing can pop off. Period. And go from shit to, from Shinola to shit. And when you got them colors on, they're going to get tested. It might not be this year. It might not be the next year. But at some point in time, them colors can be tested. And when they get tested, uh, you want to be with somebody who is going to stand to test the time with you. And um, that's the brotherhood. Now, that doesn't mean if somebody comes to me and say, hey, let's go rob a bank. No, nah, brother, you on your well, that's own. That's different between stupidity. Now, I ain't stupid. I'm not going to follow you off the cliff either. I, I, you know, if, if you want to go to the cliff, I'm going to try to talk you off the cliff and try to pull you back from the cliff. But if you decide to jump, I'm not reaching for you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll reach for you, but we're no, not going to jump. We're not Mess jumping there, reach for him and, and, and you uh, slip and fall and your ass over the cliff with him. I'm not reaching for you. Hey, bring your ass back off that cliff, man. Say, man. Say, man, come on back, man. There's a whole lot to live for. Say, you, you good? You gone? I'll holler at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we never leave a brother strat. <coughs> <coughs> now, another thing about brotherhood. We're not supposed to put our brothers... Uh, in bad situations. For instance, you know, in the MC you see it all. So we had a brother who didn't have a job. And he was doing bad. So uh, one of the brothers said, you know what? Uh, he didn't say why you don't have a job. He didn't say why did you get fired. He didn't ask him about his past. He said, you're my brother. And so what I'm going to do is get you a job on the same place that I work. And I've been at for 15 years. And I'm doing fine there. So <coughs> what are your qualifications? Well, I'm a maintenance man, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. So first of all, he didn't meet the qualifications that he said he had. So he gets over to the uh, the, the place to, to do the work, and he couldn't do that work. But his brother was like, that's okay, we can train you. Uh, but then the other stuff started happening, like he would be on his phone during working hours and all kinds of things, and not show up on time. And so this guy's got his boss looking at him, talking about, you brought this guy here. We have an obligation when our brothers go out of the way for us that we make our brothers proud. That we don't lie to get on their job because that's their job. But if we, we, that we do the right things. That we show up on time. So when a brother has extended himself for you, it is your ob <coughs> obligation to be the very best you can be because that brother has done the most has put himself on the line. And so now we have to get into the delineation of what's not a brother and what do you do when you find out you ain't messing with a brother. Real quick, I'm going to tell you like this, man. As a youngin', my daddy used to say something to me all the time that I uh, it, did, it just did not make any sense. I would look at my dad like, it's, it's not working. Trust me. Uh, you see those lights right there? That means it's, it's in the use. Anyway, he would say something to me as a youngin' that I really didn't understand at the time. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to just say it like this. He used to say, son, if you got a friend that's walking, leave him walking. It's the reason why he walking. Now, you can do two things if you want to. You can let him use your car. And two things going to happen. He going to tear your shit up and you're going to be walking. You, you feel what I'm saying? The other thing of it is, is this. If he walking, he might just like to walk. 
you don't want to see him riding. So stay, mind your business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I say that to say this. Uh, if one of my brothers needed a job and, and, and he's reaching out or he's not even, you know, I notice he doesn't have whatever it may be. Then, you know, you go, I, I'll go out of my way, but it, it's, the, it's the person, like you said, I'm, I, I'll, I'll work with you, but I'm not going to work for you. You understand what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's one of the, uh, uh, it, it just is what it is, man, for me. So if you're not working, say, man, kudos to you. It ain't my job to get you a job. You feel what I'm saying? I love you to death as my brother. You need to tighten up shit. You feel what I'm saying? And if, you know, whatever you need help with, holler at me. I'll, I'll give you the best help I can give you. But you're not going to come to my job and fuck up my job because you didn't fuck yours up. I mean, and I, I got... Woo! I got... That's <laughs> she, man. That's she, she going to find you. Hey, man, you. I got... Yeah. I'm not, that that part I'm right not there, with man. him, uh, FCC. Yeah, that, I, that's I, I, that uh, part right there. Now, I'm not man. hanging with my brother <laughs> on that one. Hey, man, you're your brother's keeper, man. You feel, so you got to split that fine. I've been, I've been you asking split, my brother not to cuss down you gotta for split that fine how with long? Me, you got to split that fine with oh, me, Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, it is what it is, man. We got about four minutes yes, left, man. Green we, said I cursed. We, we got about four minutes left. I did not curse. Yes, Again, man, we hope that tonight, man, brotherhood, we, we kind of brought it to base. And this, I guess we can still, this is another topic we can bring back because there's still so much unsaid that we didn't even get into. Oh, you shutting us down? But look, we just how much time we got. We got four minutes. Three minutes and fifty nine seconds. We have to be out of here. Have to. They know we're fans. Uh, we can't just. No, I don't like this, man. Hey, look at me. If you hadn't been on time, but anyway, you so, on time one time. One hundred six five radio dot com, man. Starting yeah. December first. Look, look here. <laughs> Finally, when your brothers are not acting like brothers, you got to be able to cut them off. There, there's a certain you know you have to reward good behavior with 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 good things and punish people bad behavior with bad things when a brother starts acting poorly you see him borrow money from one brother and he doesn't pay it back don't you get on that same bandwagon you have to be able to shut brothers down and motorcycle clubs have a hard time doing that because we want these people so much we want our numbers to be so big we don't cut bad people off mm. some people ain't brothers they just some negroes in the street and so when you have cats like that you gotta cut them off you gotta punish them you gotta you gotta use what uh, in my new book, uh, the Sergeant at Arms uh, Bible, we talk about the accountability system. The Sergeant at Arms' responsibility is to keep the accountability system within the MC valid. Mm. And you keep the accountability system within the MC valid by punishing brothers that don't act brotherly. And you, you do that with the small things to violate. You violate your uniform. You know you're not supposed to have any patches on the back, but you've got a big... Harley Davidson patch on the back of your you oh, you, got, you got one on the side close you got to the one back. On the side. Well, it's on the side. It's it's the back. So the sergeant in arms <laughs> needs to violate you and make you pay because you're violating the brotherhood. You're violating the brotherhood with a uniform infraction. You're not looking good like the rest of us. You're violating us. You're not being a brother. You, you're lying. You're not paying your dues. You don't pay your dues on time. You're not being a brother. You're, the rest of us are carrying your weight. So when a brother is not being a brother violate his butt, find his butt, suspend his butt, and teach him the values of brotherhood. I guess we got to get All out right, of so here. there it is, man. Uh, again, starting December 1st, we've uh, stepped our game Janine up. Taylor Wanna said, hey, hey y'all, Big Cell, this is your last night to cuss because the FCC don't play. Hey, Janine, they don't play. Trust, and I don't got it. I ain't got it to get to them. For real, I don't. I'm telling you the real shit. I'm, just, I'm telling you the truth. Man, I ain't right. got it to give to him. 106liveradio.com. 106liveradio.com. My FHO uh, YouTube page, FHO Atlanta GA. Black Dragon National President. Please like our page. Share our stuff. Yeah. And like that's how stuff. you'll be able to catch us. Radio and YouTube. No more Facebook. December 1st. Um, we will have everything on point. We will learn how to work the phone system. Learn how to work the radio. The whole nine yards, man. So we are putting this show together for you guys, man. We love you. We appreciate you. ProspectsBible.com. ProspectsBibleForWomen.com. Sure and the Motorcycle Club PRO's Bible. MCPRO's Bible.com. And the Sergeant and Arms Bible will be out in December. Like somewhere near December 15th. So you can get it in your Christmas stocking. There it is there, man. Again, uh, don't forget my uh, website www.therealfho.com also this show will be linked to that uh, to that we got a lot of good, good things going also stay by stand by for FHO uh, 
FHO TV, FHO, uh, whatever it is, like uh, a movie deal. So it, everything is working out, man. We're putting this thing together, man. We're gonna FHO TV. FHO movies. F I forgot what they called it. I just had a meeting about that today. But anyway, we're trying to do some things. It is what it is. We love y'all, man. We're here. We hope you like the setup. You like we the will setup? be more professional, I promise. Let us uh, know. Yeah, give he... us some names. Throw some names around in there, too, for the show. So We're thinking about... Uh... It is what it is, man. Teach MC. I say teach MC. Teach MC radio. We're gonna teach you how to MC. You know what I'm saying? Some people like real, uh, real biker radio. Listen, this is a blessing from God. We're very thankful, and we I don't. we gotta. We don't. I don't want to go we yet. Don't. We gotta go. Eleven o'clock. I don't want to go yet. Eleven o'clock, man. We out of here. We love y'all. We love y'all. Love, peace, and hair grease. Peace. Roger motorcycle. Put some respect on the throttle. Uh, love your brother, brotherhood, and get skinny. And here you go with that get skinny stuff, man. You <laughs> been up to every Thursday, 9 30 to 11. It's going down. Uh, yada, yada, yada. We need some people to operate this stuff. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, we love y'all. 106 Live Radio. We here. We appreciate you. We gone. We gone. We got a thing. I can't get to my thing.